Duck Talks is part of Res TV's network of podcasts. Check out res.tv for other great podcasts. All right. Let me explain from the beginning. Across the globe and beyond are a multitude of mystic points upon which myths and legends are born. This atlas is a map to them all, but only I can harness its power. Centuries ago, a dark wizard named Lord Feldrake gained possession of the Atlas and bound me to the book, forcing me to take him to these fantastic worlds. No. While there, Feldrake disrupted the balance of mystical forces, bending them to his evil will, and built an army to take over the universe. No way! Feldrake's victory seemed certain, until they appeared. The Three Caballeros! Yay! The Caballeros stormed Feldrake's stronghold, and using the power of three magic amulets, they trapped Feldrake in his own staff for all eternity. I swore to be their guide and ally. Together, we adventured to many magical realms, undoing the evil of Feldrake while searching for a way to free me from this book. During one of our most dangerous adventures, my book was closed and hasn't been opened until now. Wow, these stories got everything. Action, oh. adventure, romance. Romance. I have a crush on her. <laughs> It's the week of Thursday, January 2nd, and you're listening to episode 89 of Duck Talks. Happy New Year, Duck fans. We are back and ready for a brand new year of Duck Talks. Uh, If this is the first time you've listened to the podcast, uh, we want to thank you for joining us, uh, for checking us out, for taking a moment to download or to stream this podcast episode online. Uh, um, We are a... DuckTales and Disney Afternoon Universe fan podcast. And uh, we started off talking about DuckTales, but our love for the Disney Afternoon has no bounds. And that quickly grew into covering all kinds of other shows as well as other shows about Disney Ducks. And that's why we're here today. We've got a great episode planned for today. We're very excited about it. And uh, before we get into that, uh, my name's Mitch. I'm one of your hosts. And joining me this week, I have Pirate Steven. Ahoy there, 2020, woo! Yeah, does it feel any different for you from 2019 so far? It doesn't smell as bad. I mean, 2020 is going to be a great year, I think, for everything. So I'm excited. I'm excited about our first show of the decade. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's crazy. We've moved into a new decade doesn't happen every year. No, it doesn't. It's like every 10 years, I think. Something like that. About 10-ish. But yeah, we've got a great episode planned. We've got a, another guest episode. We've got a very special guest joining us for this podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to having Gray Griffin on this week. Yeah, we love Gray. She plays the voice of the, the breakout character in Legend of Three Caballeros, which if you haven't watched yet... You should watch it. I just did a rewatch for this decade because I hadn't seen it this decade. (laughs) And um, the show is fantastic. It adds a fourth caballero of uh, a character called Xandra that Gray does the voice of. And she does a great job. And it's an exciting new character. I love it. Yeah. When this show first came out, actually, let's back up. When we first found out this show had come out in another country, it was very confusing. We had a lot of fun trying to follow the information, find out what was going on, what was when the show was coming. And if we found out about it like, what was it 2018? And then it was a whole year before we were able to watch it on Disney Plus. Yeah, the, this show has been like a ghost. I mean, people, does it exist? Does it not exist? Does Disney want to actually even talk about it? And then finally, when Disney Plus launched on November 12th, it was there and it was real. And just before that, I mean, like 
not long before November 12th, we got a email saying that we could finally talk about it with Matt Danner. So we had Matt on in a great episode of Duck Talks where we got to learn a lot about the show uh, behind the scenes and, and maybe a little bit of the history of its development. That was really cool. And we've been excited to talk with some other people involved in the show. Uh, we've spoken uh, electronically um, online with a few people that uh, we may have in the future, but it's really exciting to get a chance to speak with the, the voice actress of Xandra. Yeah, and she, she also does a voice of one of the characters in DuckTales, as well as uh, another character in the Disney Parks that you might not know um, that she voices. So we're going to get into all of those favorite characters that she voices in this episode. It's going to be another great year. We've, we've got a few other people, you know, we ended 2019 on a high note with that last episode with having Frank Angones on. So we've got to kind of, the bar has been set high for 2020. I think we're ready. I think we're ready for uh, the bar to be high. We're going to have a great year. Yeah, let's not wait any longer. Let's go ahead and bring Gray on the line, and we'll talk about her career and also about some of the characters. We're three caballeros, three brave caballeros. They say we are birds of a feather. We're happy amigos, no matter where he goes. The one, two, and three goes. We're always together. We have Gray on the line. Gray, thanks for joining us for this episode of Duck Talks. I'm so excited. I love ducks and I love talking, so this should be great. <laughs> well, that's why we do the podcast. We love ducks and we love to talk. So uh, we, we were so excited to be able to connect with you uh, and to talk with you uh, about you know the Legend of the Three Caballeros and other projects that you've worked on. 20 plus years, Daphne uh, from Scooby-Doo and then Vicky on Fairy Odd Parents. Yes. Very cool career. And in the we've been looking you up a little bit and on IMDb and it just keeps going and going and going. <laughs> Your thumb gets sore. It's like when I tried to find my birth year on a um, some kind of forum on the internet. I'm like, ow, my thumb's turning. <laughs> Scrolling back to 1973. We've been interested in talking with uh, people who worked on Legend of the Three Caballeros for a while now um, because the show uh, kind of came out as a secret and, and and then we finally got to see it this year. But before we before we talk about that, we did want to ask you about your career and what drew you into voice acting. Well, I, I started out, what, well, I mean, I've always done voices since the time I was a little kid. And, um, and then, and the, like, you know, the great school talent shows and stuff, I would go up and do impressions of different celebrities and, you know, and, and different teachers. It's funny because I was, I moved around a lot when I was little and I never went to the same school for more than a few years. And, and um, I would learn all the teachers' impressions. And then when I would have to leave the school, like my entire act would be gone because nobody knew, <laughs> <laughs> nobody knew those people. So, um, but I've plugged them into characters here and there. Like, I've, I've used my old drama teacher. I, I used her on The Loud House. She plays the drama teacher on The Loud House. She's name is Mrs. Bernardo, and she talks like this. And, oh, darling. You know, she just, yeah, so I use, I use them. I still use them. But, but at the time, I was like, oh, no, I've got to get a whole new act. Nobody knows these, these teachers. Um, so, but it was good because it helped me to, you know, get a lot of characters in there. Uh, but I, finally, like, the high school talent show, I started doing impressions. And then I started, like, kind of doing kind of stand-up like for that and so then when I came out to LA I started doing a little bit of stand-up and I was at the comedy store and um Mitzi Shore who owns the comedy store she's Polly Shore's mom she used to run that place and she said you know you've got you do great voices but you need to write some jokes because you're just kind of pretty much doing impressions and you need to write certain act around it and I I was like okay she's like, but in the meantime while you're doing that you should go do some cartoons because you, you you've got you've got a lot of voices you can do and at the time I was only like um, so I, I was like, great, I'd love to do that. So I went off and, 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 I, and but it was really hard to get into. You can't just get into voiceover. So it was a lot of classes and trying to get my demo tapes to people. And finally I took a class with this one casting director who goes, I'm really good friends with Sandy Schnarr. Who's, and I, I, at the time I was like, not even 20 years old. He's like, I'm really good friends with Sandy Schnarr. She doesn't take a lot of people, but I'm going to make a phone call for you and tell her that she really needs to sign you because I think you could really do something in this business. So I'm so grateful. And I'm still signed with Sandy Schnarr today. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I wish you said, I took you because you were really nice and also talented. She's like, some people come in here and they're really good, but they're really like just jerks. And they'll treat, like she would leave 
um, like the, the receptionist at the front desk would go to lunch and Sandy would sit at her desk and people would come in and treat Sandy like the receptionist and go, Sandy told me that she wanted to hear my demo. So here's my demo. And they'd just be kind of rude to her. Yeah. And she said, I would just go, thank you very much. And I would just put that tape in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> I just happened to be a, a nice person. We got, we got along right away. So I, I'm still with her today. We still go to dinner and lunch all the time. Every time I book something big, we go out and eat some good food someplace. So. <laughs> well, that's cool. In the in the last couple of years, we've gotten to speak with a, f- a few voice actors, and it's really impressed me on how friendly everyone is in the business. I mean, it's every conversation is just a really good time. It's so true. There's just it's not very backbiting or as competitive as, as on camera. Well, I guess it is as competitive. It is as competitive <laughs> as on camera, but it's such a small world that I think if you piss somebody off, you're just gonna <clears throat> have to work with two feet away from them for the next 10 years and it's just not worth it. You know, we right. just get along because it's like a family. You kind of have to unless you want to be kicked out of Christmas, you know, or whatever holiday you guys are celebrating. You can't go if you're not going to get along with your weird brother or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah. What do you consider was your biggest, br- like your big break? What, when did When did you feel like you had made it? Because, I mean, we look at IMDb, you've got so many credits, you're, you're obviously, you do a good job, <laughs> and we enjoy listening to the voices that, that you've provided. When did you feel like, hey, i got a career in this? I guess when I got to quit my regular job, I had so many jobs when I moved to Los Angeles that, like, I... I just was doing everything. And I was still barely making it. You know, I was like hostessing at two different restaurants, waiting tables at another place, cleaning houses, doing singing telegrams. I mean, I would, and when I got to finally like just go by, you know, like <laughs> that was like when I finally thought like, I'm really like, I'm really paying my rent doing what I love, which I, that was always my goal. I think as an actor, you kind of just have to be ready to be broke all the time. Like I really was ready for that. I mean, I'm not now. I mean, things are really good now, but I never, I never, ever, I never even had my own room growing up because my grandmother raised me. So I, you know, I we always slept in the same, we, we shared a room. And um, I used to always just say like, when I grow up, I just want to have my own house someday where I can paint the walls any color I want or put up any pictures I want because my grandma would always be like no we can't put up anything because we don't know how long we're going to be living here and we're going to have to fill in all these holes (laughs) our house is always like really you know sparse and I would want to paint bright I love colors and I would always want to paint the walls it's like no the landlord's not going to let us paint anything you know so now my house has like every color like I have like every wall there's not one white wall in my entire house everything's got a color on it and there's art everywhere and you know my son's an artist so I've got his art and everybody's art his friends art everything so um yeah I but I just was ready to be broke and I I think I, I always just felt like it, it would be amazing if I could actually pay my rent and pay my bills doing what I love I mean that's probably not going to happen I'll probably have to always have some little back thing you know but I'm ready you know that's all I wanted and so to not only be be paying my rent but thriving I just I can't and also to be able to help other people you know want you know achieve their dream that's like so huge for me I can't believe I produced a comedy special last year um and I I let I I had some other I met so many young talented comedians while I was doing open mics just to get ready for the special and I kept thinking, well, you know, I could do less time. This person doesn't have any venue to do their comedy, and they're so funny, and I want more people to see them. And so after a while, I was like, okay, I guess this is just going to be a variety show because <laughs> I, I had, like, four comics that I wanted to be in it. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so when did I make a big break? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, wait, I didn't answer the question at all. Um, I, yeah, when I got to quit my job, I, I like, I got Rugrats, that was one of the first things I got. It was just a recurring role on Rugrats, but it, I actually got to say I was like, oh, my God, because people would always be like, well, have we seen you in anything, or what do you do? And then I'd have to be like, well, um, there was this one pilot, and, uh, you know, but, but if you throw out Rugrats, you'd be like, oh, okay, I know what that is. Because I, I got to be Reptar in one episode. He only was in, we only, put, like, made noise in actually one episode. He kind of came to life, and I got to do that, and I got to play the McNulty twins, and um, and then I got a lot of, little shorts on Nickelodeon people always think it like happened overnight and it it did happen pretty quickly like I I booked like seven jobs like the first month that I signed with my agent it was funny because she gave me like this pep talk she was like you might not book anything the the whole first year that I'm with you're with me but don't worry people just have to get to know you and everything and I just happened to have this big string of luck the first month so I think I got a little cocky um (laughs) but but 
and Nickelodeon did this whole thing, these things called Oh Yeah Cartoons. They were like shorts for Nickelodeon. Yeah. And I happened to book like three of those. And, and then two of them became, oh, actually three, maybe three of them became actual shows. Um, and so I, it, all of a sudden I was on three Nickelodeon shows. It was like Fairly Odd Parents, which I did from the time I was 24 or 25 to just a few year, couple years ago, you know, so it was almost 20, you know, 20 years. And, um, and I got, uh, Chalk Zone off, you know, out of that, and um, and then I ended up I did a show called uh, is it oh shoot it was it was Bob Boyle I can't remember what the short was called but I ended up doing the same voice and the similar character for him for Wubsy Wow Wow Wubsy like after that pilot didn't work out he was like I still love your voice and I still love working with you I'm gonna develop something else and maybe it'll get picked up and it ended up being a big you know we did a lot of episodes of that so. Yeah, I, I would say, and, and Emily Elizabeth on Cliff at the Big Red Dog, I, they still play the heck out of that <laughs> because it was a buyout and I don't make any money on that. It was, it was like a PBS thing, which I'm glad for the, you know, because every time a little kid comes up, they still know Emily Elizabeth, even though I did that when I was 25 or 26. So yeah, I was 20 years ago. I'm 46 now. So um, it, it, it keeps getting new fans in, but it doesn't, it doesn't pay me anything else. <laughs> so yeah. they'll probably run it until I'm 95. <laughs> yeah, both of my daughters are fans of Clifford the Big Red Dog. Oh, Those were it's good. so sweet and wholesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I'm proud of it. Now, your run on Daphne has been like over 20 years as well, right? Yes, I know. I can't believe it. I I was so used to being the new Daphne, and now I'm like, wow, I think it's, my friend said, no, you've played Daphne now longer than anyone ever has. And I was like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, don't. So the axe should be dropping any time now. <laughs> That's how my brain works. I'll just be happy. I have to be like, well, I guess it's over. Um, <laughs> well, and you've got to work with a lot of really great studios with Warner Brothers and Hanna Barbera and Disney. Um, it just yeah. sounds like a really fun career, and and it's really cool when you get to find something that you're passionate about and be successful at. So that's really cool. Yeah, I know. I can't believe it. It doesn't feel like work. You know, it's just it's so fun. I, I really. I can't believe that I, I, I can't believe that I get, you know, go to the bank and like I just did today and put the money in the actual bank. I, you know, I pay alimony. <laughs> I pay the, <laughs> I pay a lot, a lot of people. I also put a little bit of money in the bank. So that's all that matters. I have yeah. to say one of the coolest things that I've seen you've done recently is being the voice of Red from Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. I, I can I have to say, I have to be honest. I think that's the biggest thing that that, that, that was like the biggest thrill of my life because I'm such a I'm one of those weird people that has all the Disney ears. Like I have like you know the Halloween ears and the New Year's Eve ears and the Christmas ears. I mean I've got like so many ears in my basement. It's like you know it's like Disney Dahmer or something. And so I I'm I'm just a crazy Disney person. And so I and it was funny because my son complaining. My son's like, you know, all the kids are super socially aware right now. And I, I never even thought of it. I just was accepting the fact that yeah, just, there's this white slave trade going on here. It's fine. It's just a kid's ride. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> my son was like, what are they doing? Are they selling those women? And I was like, well, well, I was like, yeah, but it's just, you know, yeah, it's just, it's, you know, pirates. And, you know, I was always like trying to downplay it. He's like, we they can't have that on here. They have to change that. And I was like, well, you know, people get pretty cranky when you change up on you know rides and stuff and he goes, and he made a really great point he's like um i think if they can change it to put johnny depp on the ride they can change it to take out the human trafficking <laughs> that's a good point <laughs> yeah so i was like yeah, you're right i said but you know what honey they're probably never going to change it. i'm just going to just get you ready for that fact it's just not going to happen and then about a year later the, the audition came around so i told my son like hey you know what they're changing it i can't believe it i'm so excited i was like she's going to be like this cool pirate and he was like wow that's great and then i got called back for it so i was like hey remember that redhead thing you know the car i actually uh, like i got called back i might actually be in the running to actually be the thing but it just seemed like such a lofty goal that i couldn't even wrap my head around that it might even actually really happen and um it, it was funny because i called mary Kay bergman who played daphne before me was a really good friend of mine so it was very sad when she passed and then i ended up getting her part it just seemed very strange and and just uh, i didn't know whether i didn't know how to feel about it you know i didn't want to celebrate it because my friend was gone you know but i also wanted to carry on her legacy because she was like one of my biggest idols and so talented and 
Um, but I called her husband when they're, because we, we used to call her red, you know, she had long, beautiful red hair and we used to call her red. And I was like, Hey, you know, um, I called her husband and said, this audition came around for the red haired pirate, you know, on, on, um, she's not going to be sold anymore. She's going to be a pirate and it's going to be so cool. And, and Mary Kay would have been amazing at this. And she, and, and, you know, that was her favorite ride and it's my favorite ride. So, um, I, then I got down to just me and like, I think two other people and I was at Disney and I actually like said a little prayer to Mary Kay. I said, you know, you know, if you have any like advice or juju to send me, send it on because I, you know, this is going to be amazing, you know, and this probably should be your part, but I'm sitting here. So anything you have to offer. And I actually like felt her, she was always super prepared and I'm always like a wing it type person. I'm like, it'll be fine. Let's just go and figure it out. It'll be fun. You know, but she was always like recording herself and really practicing. And so I, I kind of thought to myself, you know what, Gray, you probably should you know, look up some pirate stuff, like learn some pirate slang or something, you know, I mean, but it was only like three lines. So I thought I'll probably be in and out of there in five minutes. And, you know, how, how much could they have me do this line, you know, it's, but I looked up a bunch of pirate slang because I was like, Mary Kay would have been super prepared. And so anyway, I get in there and they're like, yeah, so I know it's only three lines. We're just going to have you just, why don't you just make up like just improv as a pirate, like as much as you can, like, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I am so glad that I know eggs are called cackle fruit and you know like I mean I knew all these like pirate things and they were at the end they were like wow you know a lot of pirate stuff like everybody else like nobody else really like and I was like well thank you so much Mary Kay because I honestly would have just gone in and just tanked um and it was funny it wasn't funny but it was kind of a sweet thing when I found out I got uh the part her husband had left a message on my machine that day and I was thinking oh I wonder if he found out oh wait I told him, I couldn't tell him what the, what the part was when I told him that I was auditioning for something that she probably should be doing. I just, I just said that this is a part that's perfect for her. It's close to her heart. She would have loved it, but I didn't say what it was. And he goes, um, well, by hook or by crook, I hope you get the part. And I, it was like, it caught me off guard because he had no idea that it was a pirate thing or anything like that. And I, I kind of like, got, I thought, oh my gosh, that was her saying that. Like, that was not him. I mean, that was just so her, like telling him what to say, you know, and this is, this is going off on a very, um, paranormal tangent but, <laughs> but the crazy, the crazy thing was, when I found out that I got the part he had left me a message and and I was I thought oh maybe he found out that I got it I wonder how he knew and and it turned out that that was the anniversary of her passing was that day that he called me and I was about oh, to wow. call him and tell him that I got this. so to me it was sort of like a confirmation that she was just sort of like saying like no just you know I, it's yours like you know just like have fun I'm with you you know it's you know I, I'm glad you got that I'm glad you're I'm glad you're carrying on Daphne and I'm happy for you. And anyway, it just, it made me feel so much better and it was just happy. And I don't know, I just things, it might be just a weird coincidence, but it made me happy. So anyway, long, 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 weirdy, ghosty tangent, but <laughs> that's me. So yeah. Well, it's such, thrill. it's such an iconic ride. And then to have that change and to be a part of it. Um, I mean, it's going to be there for a very long time. And and it sounds like you gave them a lot of material to work with, so maybe it changes a few times. <laughs> well, it got edited down by a bit, but no, I mean, you know, it was it was. I, I definitely did a lot of uh, you know uh, improv on that, but also, yeah, I just kept thinking my grandchildren, my maybe my grandchildren's grandchildren, if, if the planet doesn't blow up, you know, will will be watching this. This is so crazy, you know. And I and and it's fun to like go on the ride with my kids, even though the one that my kids didn't want to go on because my older one doesn't mind it but my little ones are scared of it so they're like no anything but pirates and I'm like ah, really okay anything but the one that your mother's on okay that's <laughs> great that's fine um but uh yeah I it, and also I didn't realize what a breakout thing it would be like you know now I keep seeing seeing like costumes for like little girls costumes and the pops and like all this you know all this stuff it's amazing so yeah very big thrill <laughs> I never know if there's a delay or if I'm just leaving these weird, awkward pauses. No, you're, you're good. I was giving Pirate a moment in case because he's a really big fan. I mean, obviously he's Pirate, Stephen. I don't know if you caught that. Oh, he's yeah. <laughs> he's a really yeah, big actually, fan of Pirates, so I, I just figured this would be his Pirates part. Of the Caribbean for like seven or eight years, and I mean, it's Yay! so cool to be talking to someone that's actually in the ride now. And I have uh, both yeah, of the Pirates. I have both of your Funko Pops, which is another cool honor to be a Funko Pop. I know. I can't believe it. Well, Chris, uh, Chris actually made me like, like blew my mind because there were, there was, um, 
I was get I was about to do some cons and he was like, Hey, you should do a thing you know, he's so good with graphic design and stuff. So he made me this he's like, I'll make a thing of your pops, you know, so that people will know which pops you are and I'm thinking, Yeah, that'd be good for me too, because I don't know what pops I am and he made this thing that like kept changing like all the pops but and I was like, Whoa, it's still going, it's more pop. I can't believe that. I never even thought of that. It's amazing. Because I told him I was like, I know I'm a few pops. I mean people bring me pops and he's like, Yeah, you're you're a few. Um, anyway, yeah, it was really cool and, and yeah, and, and red with the, the new they did a new little read. It was about it, so. forty. Is about yes. forty. Wow! Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, well, well, pirate, well, pirate, he wants the rum, doesn't he, boys? Yes, you know, I hear that's the voice I use, so it's kind of fun. <laughs> that is. I'm gonna that be is here really for. Cool. I'm gonna be here for Halloween, in red. So I'm gonna take a bunch of red pictures in October. I was gonna do it this year, but the, I didn't realize how expensive <clears throat> it is to have like a custom, like real nice costume made. It was like, a, you know, like a thousand dollars and I was like well I better start saving for next Halloween because I, I thought the lady could just whip one up and she's like oh no that takes like four months and is like a thousand dollars I was like oh, okay well then I, I start now and I'll just start paying you little by little and I should be paid off by October so yeah they sell, they sell like the perfect child ver- sizes for uh, the red character and it's the oh, adults I always know. get gypped <laughs> I know don't they know how immature we all are um <laughs> Yeah, my daughter's. I want. If I want my daughter to be here. I want to be the big one. Like I want to go with like big red and little red. You know, so it'll be That's cute. Cool. <laughs> we also want to ask you about uh, Legend of the Three Caballeros, and then you you did some work on Ducktales. So I'm going to keep te- I'm going to keep teasing I'm going to keep teasing Legend of the Three Caballeros. Um, you did you voiced a character named Man on Ducktales recently? Yes. Yes. I know. I thought it was. I, I I do so many little tiny parts for things, that, and I'm fine with that. I don't mind, you know. But when I saw that I was playing man, I was like, oh, did they wait? Did they misspell man? Is it just man, or and then I thought, are they sure they want me to do man? They were like, no, it's just it's a it's a woman, but it was like kind of like you know a, a, a handsome woman. I was like, oh, okay, great, all right. So I you know, I put on my best. Uh, she kind of had like a ba kind of a Boston kind of thing going on, you know. So anyway, I, I don't remember exactly what I did for that. But no, that's <laughs> it. That's that's what I recall. She's a, she's a Fisher yeah. person. Yeah, Fisher person. Yes, person. Yes, it, it could be the first trans Ducktales character. So I don't want to, you know, I don't want to put a gender on it. So I don't want to misgender it. That's true. <laughs> the yeah. partner's name was Fisher, so they were man the man Fisher, and uh, oh, instead of Fisher man. <laughs> Yes, I remember now. That's great. I love that. That's perfect. That's great. <laughs> well, it was a fun That's part. So when fun. A- it was a fun part, and it was a it was a oh, really it's- great episode. Um, the it's the uh, Duke oh. Baloney episode, and uh, the addition of those characters was a lot of fun. We actually were expecting to see them at the end of the season, when the finale, when everybody comes together. We were disappointed that everybody wasn't there, but we got a we got a lot of cameos. Uh, but maybe season oh, three, yeah, we see more of her. They're very, they're very, they're very, uh, they're, I'm always getting in trouble is what I'm saying. I have a big mouth and I'm always, I'm always getting a nice polite email going, hi Greg, could you take that tweet down real quick that you just put up? And I'm like, okay, I, I will. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I should wait till some Disney account with a check mark by it says something that I'm like, okay, great. Now, now, now you can say it. Okay. Well, and that's how things went with the three cabs because it was like we were on and then we were off and then we were on and then we were off about talking about it. Like we spoke with Matt Danner not long ago um, before the show premiered in November uh, on Disney Plus. And um, before that, we had been in contact with him uh, by email and on Twitter. And there were multiple times where we were like, hey, we think we can talk about it. And it was like, no, not yet. <laughs> But uh, so crazy. So all the people in Puerto Rico were, or not Puerto Rico. It was the Philippines. No, it was the Philippines. Oh God, what was wrong with me? I was in, I was just in Puerto Rico, so I I have Puerto Rico on the brain. Um, yes, yes, because I was saying like, um, they're airing it somewhere, and I I didn't know exactly where, and then I was like, they're they're airing it somewhere, and 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 why can't we talk about it if it's already airing somewhere? But they still were like, no. So anyway. Well, your character on the show is, well, one, you're the only main character that's not a bird. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I, and I felt like she was such a Disney princess type. Like, it was a very cool, you know, like, it was very Disney, Disney princessy, you know. So um, I, I got to do my best, you know. But they, but they definitely wanted her very strong. You know, they said, don't fall into the princess mode because she's strong and super smart. So 
do the princess like you know the the, the sweet energy and like the, they said we really want her to be sort of like an aunt like a cool aunt you know like a big almost a big sister not you know so not and and, and the, the bravest of the group too so so it wasn't you know classic classic Disney princess it was strong the new kind of Disney princess like Moana <laughs> yeah. yeah she was like the she was like the fourth caballero and a lot of people thought that was a breakout new character for that franchise yeah yeah I yeah yeah I, I I was so I'm so proud to be involved. I have to say, with no goading of my own, my children have my well. It was it was usually we don't do a ton of TV, but over the holidays I broke down because I didn't have a babysitter. So I was like, all right, let's you know you can watch like you know just Disney has to be on Disney Plus because I thought, well, how bad can it be? Well, it can be a little bit bad, but I, I said like it has to be the cartoons, it has to be on Disney Plus, and you can pick anything you want. And they started watching the Three Caballeros, and they loved it. They were just. It was so funny because I, I was hearing myself and I was like, wait, what is it? And I walked into the TV room and I was like, hey, I was like, that's me, that's mommy. And I kept trying to do it and they were like, shh, mommy, no, shh, mommy, we're trying to, you know, they, they, they shushed me. I, I got shushed in my own home and it was, it was really demoralizing. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, they, they are loving it. They really love it. So I'm, it makes me happy. And I hope other kids are loving it. I hope it's not just my kids because they, they feel familiar with my voice. <laughs> Maybe it's just a home feeling. I don't know. Well, we get a lot of good respect. You get you're getting good feedback on it. We are getting great feedback on it. We know a lot of people were excited about it when it first hit the internet, and and people were like, "What is this? How come we don't know about this?" Um, we had a lot of people messaging us asking us if we knew anything, and as we were getting a little bit of information here or there that we could share, um, people people were ready for the show and. We were extremely excited when we realized it was coming to Disney Plus or when we started to think that it was coming to Disney Plus. And then, of course, once that announcement came, uh, people have been excited about the show. And, you know, when Disney Plus hit, there were a lot of people online talking about, you know, we need a season two. We need to make sure people know about this show because that was part of the discourse because, you know, it had it, because it had aired in the Philippines some people got a hold of it and some people were able to see it early. And so there was this discourse within the community of hey make sure you watch this show when it premieres because you know people have to watch it if we want more and there's a lot of people who want more oh i'm so glad that makes me that makes me happy because i've loved what i've seen so far and i don't watch much of what i do you know i don't really i don't watch well since we don't watch tv that much at our house you know like i don't catch things and i feel bad there's people who are big fans of things and then they find out i haven't seen it before and it's almost like you ruined their day you know they're just like (laughs) what you and I'm like, no, I've never looked at that. They're like, what? Like, I mean, they can't even, they can't, they can't comprehend. <laughs> so, but this is one show that I actually have seen a lot of. So, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. So, so I saw that in, um, you were, you kind of taken the torch from Rusi Taylor to do some of the Simpsons characters. Do you, have you been asked to do any of the Disney ones, like Huey, Dewey, and Louie, or Minnie? I auditioned for... Uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. I thought I got really close. My agent said I got closer than, you know, anybody at her. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that, but like, but she said I, I really matched it very close. And I and I, I know I did a great job at Minnie. Um, I, they haven't asked Minnie. Yet. I know who got it, but I can't say. But she's a wonderful, dear person and a really fabulous actress. And she's not as well known as a lot of other voice actors, but, which, but she should be because she is so talented. And I actually, you know, went to my agent. I, I did I did a panel with her a long time ago, and, and nobody knew really who she was. But I, I said, um, she's done a few things, but I told my agent, you, this woman is so talented. I was like, she's talented, more talented than 90% of the women that I work with. You know, she should be working a lot more. So when I heard she got many, I was like so excited about it. Yeah, she's, she's like really, really incredible. So when they announce it, just know that it has my stamp of approval. <laughs> also, I feel like many needs to be done by someone who has a little bit more time. I mean, I, I'm a single mom with three kids and I do voiceovers all day long. And I, I you know, there's no way that I could like travel for, uh, you know, cause I know Rusi, Rusi was a very good friend and she and Wayne, when they were, you know, they traveled a lot, you know, sort of being ambassadors to the, you know, the brand and, you know, and so, um, I, I think it needs somebody who can devote more more of themselves to it. You know, I, I would have been proud to try to accommodate it, but I'm really happy with who got it. So, yeah, because Rusi, it's just I, I was just so touched to be able to take over um, her her characters on The Simpsons, just because I loved her so much, and and 
I hope, hope she, I hope I've got her blessing too. <laughs> her and her and Mary Kay, you know, it's um, it's an honor. It, it's a strange feeling to take over something like that from people that you know, but but it's an honor because you know you you love them so much and you just you know I would want that. I would want someone who I loved and who was a friend of mine to to take over when when I can no longer do my stuff. So yeah. Yeah, because those are real legacy it, characters now. I mean, you're it's you know you're the second generation on on um, you know on the Simpsons with with Martin, and it's really cool that you had that relationship and that you can kind of pull from that um, when doing the character because yes. it's it's more than just another job. Yeah, it. I, I, I well, I mean, I hard I don't geek out that often too much anymore. So it's been you know over twenty years, but but I drove onto that lot at that Fox lot, and I and I like I took a picture of the Simpsons building, and then I took you know they have like parking for us. So I took a picture of a parking spot, and I took. I mean, I was like being a real dork the first day. I have calmed down quite a bit now, but I but I'm it's just like I can't believe it. It's just such a such an honor, and I know that a lot of times they retire characters, you know, when when the person is no longer able to do it. And I think they made an exception in this case, which, and I was so grateful because, you know, they can't retire all the care. I mean, everybody's going to go someday or another. And the Simpsons is such a great show. I hope it lives on past everybody, you know. And now it's a Disney show. (laughs) Yes, I know. Yes, I know. It's so funny. Everything's just conglomerating into this one huge cloud. (laughs) So It's good in some cases. In some cases, I'm like, I don't know. I miss, I miss the different, you know, things. Now, I saw a video that went viral this year uh, of you playing the part of Batman, and uh, you are my favorite Batman after seeing that one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what? I should I should add Batman to my resume. I'm going <laughs> right? to do it as a joke. That'll be, yeah. I'm going to put, like, Batman in a video. You know? <laughs> I hadn't seen it. Somebody tagged Twitter, and I just laughed so hard. It was so good. Yeah. Have your kids, have your kids seen that one? My my oh, 13 year old has seen it. Yeah, He's, yeah. He thought it was really funny too. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> and, yeah, I love playing Catwoman. Um, I just meow. It's so fun. I just like to flirt inappropriately with everyone who comes up to my table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun to be a little vixen. <laughs> Now, speak, speaking of which, um, I recently missed you in Knoxville, Tennessee at Fanboy. I was there. I didn't realize you were um, until Pirate messaged me. I was I think I'd already left. I was like, are you kidding? I don't know how I missed her. Um, but we wanted to ask you about your uh, convention schedule. And, you know, um, is there anything coming up that you can share, you know, so people can uh, come out and meet you? Oh, my gosh. All they need to do is uh, there's so many things going on this year. I have I, like all these bills to pay, so I, <laughs> I feel bad. I, I'm trapped way too much for a single mother. I really, it's I'm not being good mom this year. But next year I'm gonna stay home the whole time because I, I'm like, I, I kept saying yes, yeah, sure, yeah, oh yeah, to everything. And now I looked at my schedule and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gone that weekend. Oh my god, I'm, I think I'm gone like every other weekend for the rest of the year. <laughs> so you will meet me if it, I will be somewhere near someone. You know, if, if anybody wants to meet me and hug me. I will be near you at some point this year. I promise. Um, I, and if you want to know the list, just go to my Twitter at graydelisle.com or graygriffin. Just Google Gray Griffin Twitter and you'll find it. Um, and, um, and at the very top of my Twitter, the, um, my saved tweet is an image, a beautiful image that my booking agent, Chris Clover, made for me with all the different places I'll be in. You could just find one near you. Oh, Awesome. <laughs> And you also, I, I know Pirate has looked into this a little bit further. You've also started doing Cameo. Oh, yes. That's been so fun. Like, for the holidays, I made so many fun things. And, yeah, I, I'm very, yeah, that's really great. And is yeah. that also Cameo on the website, perfect. or is that separate? If you just go to Cameo.com, um, it's also on, you can, you know what? I have a, you know, I should pump this. I have a website launching um, the, the, in probably about a week and everything will be on it. Every place you can see me perform stand up, every place I'll be signing autographs, every, you know, my cameo, my, uh, my, you know, my Twitter, just my Instagram, everything, everything will be on in one place. Great. Great. Delisle Griffin.com. Awesome. So it's all the names. I couldn't get Gray Delisle cause some jerk like bought it and wanted to charge me $4,000. <laughs> and I thought, Oh, you've vastly overestimated, uh, how 
much confidence I have in this website. So I, I just like, I'm not gonna, I don't care about that team. I'm not going to get pay four thousand dollars to make nothing. Anyway, so yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Well, cool. Thank you again for joining us and, and allowing us to ask you a few questions and just talk about your career. Um, it's one of the things we really enjoy that we didn't think we would, honestly, when we started d- doing this podcast, we didn't consider doing any type of interviews with anybody. Um, and it's, it's it's such an honor anytime we get to speak with someone in the industry. And we're, we're fans of yours, and we really hope to hear that there's a season two of Three Cabs coming, uh, and we'll get to hear more from Zandra. Oh. I hope so too. I mean, it was a pleasure, you guys. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being patient with me and my crazy mom schedule. And um, yeah, I'm not even back to work yet, and I'm I'm so crazy busy with the kids. <laughs> I'm like, I can't wait to get back to work and just sit on my butt and drink coffee and make weird voices. So <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a great happy new year. That's awesome. Thank you. You as well. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of Duck Talks. We would like to thank Gray Delisle Griffin for joining us. Uh, you should check out her Twitter at Gray Delisle. And you can also check out her convention schedule and find out when you can see her comedy show if you're following her on Twitter. Be sure to check out DuckTalks.com. That's our blog where we try to keep up with the latest news. Uh, we're getting into that rumor season for Season 3 of DuckTales. And uh, we'll be putting out some blogs as we get information. And you can also check us out on Twitter at DuckTalks. Don't forget, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube, Spotify, or your favorite podcatcher. And if you enjoy the show, please consider giving us a rating or a review. And as always, you can reach us at DuckTalksPod at gmail.com. We do plan on doing another episode coming up this week. Uh, This is... Sunday evening as I'm recording the outro for this episode so that it'll get to you for the new week. But we're we're going to be recording a new episode, just kind of a catch-up. We're going to catch up uh, for the new year and uh, talk about any news that we can scrounge up. So if you know of anything, be sure to send it to us so we'll have plenty to talk about. But yeah, that's that's going to be it for now. Uh, Thank you for listening. Until next time, stay glom golden. And if you can dream it, you can do it. (laughs) See y'all. Duck Talks is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Any sounds or audio clips played on this podcast are the property of their copyright holders. Mm-hmm.